Hello, my name is Sidney Garziguchi, and for my Botany for 50 project, I decided to make a little book called Algal Blooms for, in for Infants. Uh, I took inspiration from a series of books called Topic for Infants. And I thought those were really fun to read, so I wanted to make something like this because I thought it would be fun to do. So here we have the title, Algal Blooms for Infants. In the beginning, we have a man about to eat a crab, just enjoying his day. What a delicious looking crab. I can't wait to eat up. And out of nowhere, hold up there, bud. Let me serve some facts before you eat that guy. I might just change your mind. Follow me. This, crab, this crab's name is Eugene. The next page, we see him hitching a ride to uh, to the ocean on a on a little boat. Thanks for the ride, boys. Come down if you want to learn. And then he will jump into the water, because in order to tell you why you should think before eating marine animals, I gotta bring you to where they come from first. Welcome to the ocean, where there is much to see. It is the home to the marine animals you should be more cautious of. And he's going to float more down. For now, let's start with these guys over here. If you notice, I actually put little dots uh, near his claws because the things that we really need to be more, ca uh, more cautious of cannot be seen, you know, with our human eyes. A little joke I put in there. No, not these guys. That's a, because this is actually a different issue. Uh, bleached coral and all. Yep, there we go. These are the guys that you gotta look out for. And I have a little narrative. So what exactly are these things? And of course, good question. You can't tell just by looking at if you've never seen these before. So here we have dinoflagellates, diatoms, and cyanobacteria. These guys are microscopic algal species. Of course, I need to pull that down a little bit. Basically, you can think of them as plants that live in the ocean that are too tiny to see. They eat sunlight and other things because I can't tell that they photosynthesize, photosynthesize, right? And the question goes, what are those other things? Another good question. These other things I'm talking about is nutrients that they get from runoff or upwellings, or both. Runoff is water that does not get absorbed by the ground and carries soil and nutrients to another body of water, like the ocean or a lake or a stream. And upwellings is when currents rise up from the bottom. And the reason why they can get nutrients from upwellings is because upwellings can carry nutrients from the bottom, uh, from the bottom of the ocean to the top where you can, uh, where you can find those algal species, those tiny, tiny things. If they continue to uh, get a lot of nutrients, they start to grow like crazy and are able to cover a large area causing something called an algal bloom. So in his little thopo, you can see this little green uh, part of the ocean or whatever body of water that can be, uh, because more often than not, uh, they, they can be green or, you know, sometimes they can be green. Algalums can come in many different colors. A lot of times they smell bad and sometimes they are really pretty. A really good example of a pretty one is actually um, this one biolumin bioluminescent algal bloom. And the reason why you should be so cautious of them is because they can produce a lot of toxins. So I have the, this little biohazard symbol here. And even though the fish look fine when you catch them or the crabs look fine when you catch them, it's very harmful to humans still. Uh, a few of these toxins, like ciglotoxins, there's no really other, there, there's no real other way to put it. Uh, this is known as one of the most common 
um, seafood related illnesses that have that, that have been reported. Uh, people who are diagnosed with this usually have problems with their stomach. They have breathing problems with their lungs, and some can even have like really weird brain functions. Oftentimes, they'll feel, you know, like weakness or pain or these really weird sensations like pins and needles. It's it, it's actually a very like gnarly thing to to catch and they're mo and they're mainly found in fish uh, other than stigotoxins the, the stigotoxins are just one of, uh, is just one of the more uh, reported ones they're, they aren't the scariest ones that you can find uh, there, there there are other types of toxins i won't go over all of them but another one is called paralytic shellfish poisoning and of course, shellfish, they, they can be found in shellfish. Uh, the toxins that cause this are called saxitoxins. And people who usually take in the saxitoxins uh, at first will feel a very strange tingling around the mouth and lips. And that will eventually lead to things like tingling around the whole body uh, and other really weird brain symptoms. People will, uh, people will often report weakness, loss of coordination, and a strange floating sensation when they're just sitting down or walking around. You can also get slurred speech, pins and needles, you know, that, that, that really tingling feeling in your, in your arms sometimes when you like fall asleep on it. Yeah. So, you can get infected with these toxins through a, uh, through a few different, you know, modes of, you know, intake, you could say. Um, you can get directly uh, afflicted by it, or you, you can get, uh, get it directly if you swim in one, but the water usually looks kind of gross. So I don't know people who would want to, just swim in a green lake or something. Uh, but sometimes when there's like a red tide, if you're near like the coast or the shore, sometimes the wind can actually pick it up and it can be brought straight to you on, uh, on the air. Another way you can, uh, a few other ways it can get to you are clams, you know, shellfish bivalve shellfish like clams, oysters, and mussels because they're what they're what you're called filter feeders. So they're in the water and basically when the water flows through it, it will filter like certain nutrients out of the water like phytoplankton and if there's an algal bloom it will actually filter out the those little diatoms and dinoflagellates and, if, and and while it's in there it can still be you know its flesh its body can just be overrun with all those toxins and of course there are fish that swim in the water you know their gills are kind of uh, the other uh, gills kind of like pu uh, push water in and all that and of course crabs and lobsters you know scavengers who basically uh, who basically like walk along the the ocean floor and they eat anything that they possibly can whether it's harmful or not fish can be like this as well so they can go up to a little clam and they can eat it you know oh yeah here, here's here's a little diagram of how, of how that thing can work the toxins can go through fish and clams and become contaminated fish can also eat the clams as well because some fish can be scavengers since since Eugene here is a scavenger, he will eat anything he uh, he can get his hands on. Even though they seem fine when you take them out of the water, it could be a completely different story when you actually eat them. You know, we we went over a lot of the problems that can that can come from eating a contaminated 
marine animals. So harmful algal blooms can be pretty scary, but sadly we can't just, you know, paddle out there on a boat with a bucket and just scoop it out of the ocean. Because even if you're the scoop it out of the ocean, there's no real way to, you know, get rid of every dinoflagellate or every diatom that's in that area. So the only real way to stop an algal bloom is to cut its source of nutrients. Um, a lot of times the nutrients to, uh, actually come from um, human, you know, human fertilizers that we use for plants and stuff because those fertilizers pack a lot of nutrients for other plants. And of course, since algal blooms or those tiny algal species are considered tiny plants, or you can think of them as tiny plants, they take in the same nutrients. So the only way to really stop an algal bloom is to cut off a source of nutrients, which often come from human resources. And there you have it. No matter what creature you're eating, whether it's beef or you know, chicken or anything like that, you should be aware of what you're eating and where it comes from. And I hope you're able to learn something and thank you for reading. And uh, here's a little, here's a neat little thing. When you have a fish tank and it turns green, that's actually considered an algal bloom. And yeah, yeah, I, I did just go over how scary algal blooms were, but they're actually not, they're, they're actually not harmful. In fact, majority of the algal blooms are non-harmful. A lot of them are actually beneficial or a lot of them are actually good. And if you want to make your own because you thought it was pretty cool, what, what, what we talked about today, you can make your own algal bloom by taking some water out of a stream uh, putting it into a bottle of distilled water and just adding some liquid fertilizer. It's it, it's actually a really, really cool way of, you know, observing these types of things. And I hope you enjoyed my little reading. Have a nice day, everyone.